Saw Guy Podcast. Like scary movie. Uh huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Here's Johnny. You are so The Boogeyman is real. And you found him. Game over, man. Game over. What do you want? I want to hear you scream. Welcome to the Saw Guy Podcast. As always, y'all know I'm the Saw Guy. And yeah, I'm doing episode 29 right now on The Predator. <laughs> um, I always wanted to do an episode on The Predator, but I know like I haven't gotten too many sci-fi horror films in there. I know everyone's been kind of reaching out to me and saying, hey, you haven't done a sci-fi horror film. You've done a lot of slashers, but you know... And I'm like, well, I did the last sci-fi film. I look at it and I'm like, oh, fuck. It was episode 13 with They Live. <laughs> I was like, shit. I, all right, so I got to refresh it up here. And I got to bust out this sci-fi horror favorite of mine, The Predator. Now, a lot of people are going to give me shit about this because they're going to say, The Predator is not sci-fi horror. You know that, Mr. Saw Guy. And I'm like, yeah, it is. I mean, if you look at it, it was made in the 80s, you know. Um, at the time of the 80s. There, there was a lot of genre bending movies. There really was, you know, and this was one of them because, you know, on one end of the spectrum, some people are going to say, oh, this is a badass action film. It's got Arnold Schwarzenegger. Other people on the other spectrum are going to say, oh, it's sci-fi. Um, you, then you got people like me that's going to say, yeah, that's a sci-fi horror film because it is, <laughs> you know. But anyways, if you haven't seen The Predator, I'm going to break it down for you like I always do. And with that being said, you know, if you've seen The Predator, you know, y'all know and will remember all the funny scenes, the best scenes. I mean, this is a great fucking movie, you know, <laughs> great acting, everything. So anyways, let's get started on it, right? The Predator. So basically, this film was released in June 12th of 1987. And this story follows a badass group of mercenaries that are just flying out to Central America. You don't know what it is, but it shows that they're flying out right now. And then all of a sudden, at the same time, you see this alien spaceship going around Earth, right? And then it goes right back to the mercenaries. They land a helicopter, like, on the coastline. And then, you know, you see every one of them get out. Jesse the Body Ventura, um, Bill Duke. You see Shane Black. You see Sonny Lanham. And then at the end, you see Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, in the shadow, lighting up his cigar, you know, smoking it. And then they all get in the Jeeps. They go off. Arnold Schwarzenegger comes in and he starts talking to the general. And the film implies that it's him and his team. They're a bunch of badass mercenaries. And they're more of a rescue operation. Like, if shit's going down, you're going to call Arnold Schwarzenegger's crew, right? So, when that's going on, you see Arnold Schwarzenegger talk to the general. And he's like, yeah, we got some cabinet, min cabinet ministers. They went behind enemy lines. We need you to go in there and, and save them. And then <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger, he starts questioning it, like, does he always go on enemy lines? Then you see uh, Carl Weathers, who plays Dylan. Everybody knows Carl Weathers because he was Apollo Creed. I mean, come on. Badass Creed, right? Well, anyways, he's like, because some damn fool told, told them that you was the best. They go in there. They shake hands and shit. And I laugh right now. I'm chuckling because I've seen so many people make memes off of this, you know, where they're like, they slap hands and shit. And all of a sudden, like, it's like an atomic bomb blowing up. I mean, it's stupid shit, you know? Then they start talking, and they basically say, okay, so what's going on with this? And then Carl Weathers, or Dylan, he breaks it down and says, well, hey, we have, uh, you know, basically informants, I guess you could say, that are back over there behind enemy lines, and they're going to get squeezed. So basically, they're torturing him for information. That's what he's trying to tell him. And he's like, okay, well, we'll go out there and we'll handle it. When do we ship out? And he's like, well, you ship out with me. I'm going to be running the team. And... Arnold Schwarzenegger's character Dutch didn't like that. He's like, General, you know my team always works alone. And he's like, well, we have, we all have our orders, you know. So the next scene, it shows that they're all geared up. They're in the helicopter. <laughs> Has some of the best iconic scenes in there, you know. It shows every one of the guys, uh, part of the mercenary team, they're all different in their own way, you know. You have Sonny Lanham, who plays Billy. He's a Native American guy who... Keeps to himself. He's like this big brute guy. He's the tracker. He finds out everything, what's going on. Then you have uh, Jesse the Body Ventura playing as Bling. And he's like this big ass guy who <laughs> stirs up the shit, you know? But he's fucking funny, you know? Then you have Bill Duke, who's his buddy. He's just, you know, usually kind of chill. 
And he's over there always shaving, you know. Um, then you have Shane Black, who plays kind of like the geeky guy or the nerdy guy. And they purposely made him that way by wearing the glasses and shit. Then you got Poncho, who's kind of like one of the henchmen, you know, kind of one of the guys that kind of follows around. Like, he's he's not the tough guy, but he's like the guy in the middle, you know. Um, and it was pretty cool. I, I liked how they did all that because every one of them, they all are different in their own way, you know. So as they're, as, as they're in the airplane, you hear uh, Long Tall Sally. <laughs> they're playing. They're talking. They say some crude, funny-ass jokes, fucking with each other as they're going. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, my favorite joke on there was uh, freaking Jesse the Body Ventura handing around dip. And they're all like, get that shit out of my face. What the hell? This is going to make you a damn sexual Tyrannosaurus Rex, just like me, you know? Fucking funny. To me, it was. <laughs> Um, but anyways, you know, then they start getting word that, okay, shit, they're coming up to the rendezvous, rend I can't even say it, rendezvous point, where the helicopter at first crash. So they gear up, you know, clip on, they slide down, they go and they see that they're in the jungle, you know, they're doing the Navy SEAL team, and, um, Navy SEAL, why did I say Navy SEAL? Mercenary, you know? But anyways, uh, what's pretty cool about this is that you have two of the actors, you know, Richard Chavez, who played Poncho, and then he had Jesse the Body Ventura. They were both, well, they were both in the military, but Jesse the Body Ventura, he was a Navy SEAL, which is why I said Navy SEAL. And he had, um, what's his name? Poncho, the actor, Richard Chavez. He, uh, he was in the military. I think, I think he was in the mil. well, I can't remember if it was Army or what, but I was doing all my research on this, you know. You know me and my whole research, I always gotta fucking do all the details and shit <laughs> but anyways uh, what i thought was pretty cool is that they had helped trained the rest of the actors of like how to do hand signals and stuff so you see arnold schwarzenegger do a lot of hand signals like telling him to be quiet like he grabs his fingers and does all that cool stuff you know so they get over there to the rendezvous point they see the helicopter they go up there check it out and everything they see uh the tags and everything and they knew that it was one of the guys right then Billy tracks it out and says, okay, well, they basically grabbed him and then, you know, they went missing, right? So Billy tracks him all the way up into this tree where they're hanged upside down. They're fucking skinned alive, which would look badass, by the way, the effects. And um, they basically figured out, okay, something's on, something's not right. You know, they these gorillas, they wouldn't have done that. And, you know, so they gear up and they're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> um, then I, one of the most iconic scenes in that film was you see the bag being pulled off from Jesse the Body Ventura. Payback time. Because they're going over there. And they found the base where the base was. Where they were holding the informants. Right? They go over there. Arnold Schwarzenegger tells them. Hey. We be quiet. I'm going to give you the hand signals. You take out this guard. You take out this guard. And then this is where all the action build up. You know? They take out the guards. They tell him he's good. Then all of a sudden they start going. And they and whole shit goes haywire. You know? <laughs> Friggin' uh, the shooting scene, the action scenes, blowing up shit. You know, a lot of iconic scenes. You know, a lot of iconic lines. Obviously, you know, you see Arnold Schwarzenegger pulls out his knife, sticks a guy, and he's like, stick it around, you know? Um, you have Jesse the Body Ventura playing his blame, and he's and he gets shot. He gets hit in the arm. Then they're trying to get this guy who's, you know, dugged in in the bunker. And he's like, dude, you're hit. I got time to bleed. Oh, yeah? You got time to duck? Pew, pew, pew shooting the freaking grenade launcher to go in there and while that's all going on they basically kill everybody except this one girl they knock her out because she tried to kill Arnold Schwarzenegger and then Arnold Schwarzenegger's character Dutch he tells his crew hey look around scatter around see you know evaluate the situation Mac comes back and he tells him hey well something big was going to go down over here we don't know what the fuck it was then Arnold Schwarzenegger had found out like, okay, this is a bullshit story. They just came in here to be assassins and kill everybody. He confronts Dylan about it. And Dylan was like, well, you're an expendable asset. I use you to get the job done. And that, and that's all, you know? And, our, well, Dutch was pissed off because he's like, well, you know, we're a rescue team. We don't do that shit. Um, we're going to get the fuck out now. <laughs> and the whole film from here on down, that's where it kind of goes bad for the whole mercenary guys because basically this whole time everything's going down you see a thermal vision so it doesn't imply that it's an alien or anything you think okay well it's an action film it's you know they have a heat seeker or something on them right they're getting all their gear they're fucking walking away and shit um mac he tells uh dylan 
because Dylan takes one of the hostages, well, hostages, he takes one of the survivors with him, and he gets a scorpion on his back, takes it out, and he's like, yeah, anytime. Kills the scorpion. Then you see the predator coming out there, evaluating all the situation, like oh, everybody all dead, shit blown up. Then you see this freaking alien hand just like, Whoa! and it's just like a fucking loud scene. He grabs the scorpion, sees that it's still alive, and then it goes black like it died. And then he's like reading over the voices and shit. It was crazy because it's like, it plays on a lot of the less is more aspect, which is badass. You know, I liked it because this whole film doesn't tell you that it's an alien. You just know that it's something, right? So they go into the forest and little by little, they start getting picked off. And the first one to get killed was Hawkins because he's a geeky guy because the girl that they had, you know, brought along with them, she tried to escape. Hits one of the guys with a freaking piece of wood or a log runs off and they basically whistle to Hawkins. He goes over there and then he catches her and then she's like freaked out and then all of a sudden you see like the predator, his eyes light up, whoosh, comes out with his, uh, what do you call it, the blade, the wrist blades, whoosh, takes out Hawkins. He's knocked out, drags him out. Whoosh. And um, interesting note on that, that scene actually had Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> you just don't see him. Um, Jean-Claude Van Damme, he was actually the original Predator. He got an uncredited role, even though they used some of the scenes of using it with him. And I thought it was kind of interesting on that. But I'll get back to it on later at the end of this episode, towards the end. So, back to, back to the movie. Anyways, after all that's going on, they go on and see the girl. And they're all like, wait a minute, that's not her blood. And then they see that Hawkins was all like gutted up and everything. And they're all like, okay, well, it's got to be somebody. Well, it's got to be something different because, you know... If it was the bad guys, like, how come they didn't take his radio? How come they didn't take, you know, his gun or anything, you know? So while they're all kind of dealing with that, Blaine kind of goes off in his own way. Blaine is Jesse the Body Ventura, the badass motherfucker, you know? Um, he hears noises and he's like, oh, whatever, you know? Then the Predator, you know, being in camouflage, just shoots his gun. Blows out his whole fucking chest. Mac comes in and sees it. Then he's like, Sergeant! And then... Obviously, you have this big-ass shootout scene where they're shooting into nothing. I laugh because they're fucking wasting all this ammo, and they're shooting the fucking trees down, you know? And you see all the trees getting hit, and they're just going down. And then they figured out that all those rounds that they shot, probably like, you know, 5,000 rounds, I'm assuming, um, they hit nothing. You know, Poncho went and looked, and he's like, we hit fucking nothing. Then they figured out, okay, it, it's got to be something. It, it's not the bad guys. Something's taking us out one by one. So they get Mac, which is pretty cool because Mac, he's a demolitions expert. So he knows how to do frags, claymores, um, flares, like sets off traps in case of like somebody's coming around. So uh, Dutch basically told him, hey, set everything up. We're going to make a stand here. And, you know. They do all that, and then they basically, they put a poncho over Blaine, make sure, you know, they did, like, this heartfelt goodbye, and I understand it, you know, because they were best friends, Mac and, and Blaine, so they built that intimacy with it, you know. After that goes on, he's basically saying, you know, that motherfucker, he's gonna come back, and I'm gonna cut your name in him, you know, because he was standing guard. Then, uh, the Predator sends in a pig to set off all the flares. While they're chasing after the pig, or the boar, he comes in and he takes Blaine out. You don't see it. Until afterwards, they're like, hey, you need to get over here, Major. Uh, his body's missing, like, you know. Then that's when they figured out, as the sun comes up, like, hey, how the fuck did he take out this big body uh, without us knowing? And then they basically said, okay, well, it was the pig. It was used as a distraction. And Billy, he's a tracking expert. So he was like, there's no tracks other than the pigs, you know. So how the hell is he taking us out? Arnold Schwarzenegger starts looking up. He's using the trees. Oh, like a hunter. Interesting note, this film was actually called The Hunter. <laughs> um, it, I'll, I'll get into that later on, but, you know, they played on the aspect of the alien being a hunter. So that's when Dutch was like, okay, fuck it. We're going to, you know, make a stand before we go out into the chopper. Otherwise, it's going to keep picking us off one by one. So they set up booby traps and shit. They dug a hole. They put a net there that they made from all the jungle, like, wood and shit and all the twines and vines and everything. And um, after that, you know... They hear something rustling, and then Dutch goes out, and he's like, oh, it's shit. And then all of a sudden, the Predator sets off the track, whoo, gets picked up, starts shooting everything. He fucking hits, uh, what is it? 
hits like one of the big tree branches and it comes down, knocks out Poncho. Um, after that, then basically they're like, you know, you see Mac go crazy. And he was like, I see you, motherfucker. So he's chasing after him. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I always want to say Arnold Schwarzenegger. Dutch. That's the name of his character, Dutch. He was calling after him, Mac, Mac. Um, he was going to go chase after him. And then all of a sudden, Dylan's like, hey, get your people the hell out of here. I'll take care of it. That's not your style. Well, somebody's got to do it. And I got to pay him back. So he gives him the other gun. He goes over there. While they're doing that, Billy tells Dutch, hey, you know, he's busted up pretty bad. So it, it implied that when the branch hit him, it busted his sternum and shit. So they're having to carry him around to try to get to the rendezvous point, you know? And while that's going on, you see Mac and, um, well, you see Mac kind of go crazy at first. He, like, pulling all of his gear out, trying to lighten up his load. And he's singing Long Tall Sally because that, that was implied that that was Blaine's favorite song, you know, because he's going after him for his buddy. Then you see Dylan come in and he gets pulled behind and then Mac is telling him, hey, I see him over there, you know? And then uh, Dylan was like, okay, well, I'll come from the back and then I'll flush him out towards you and you take this motherfucker out, right? As Mac tries to go in, he doesn't realize that the Predator sees Heat. They don't know that until towards the end. But anyways, he sees Heat. He has the, you know, laser. Bam! Takes him out, right? Uses his voice to kind of distract Dylan. And then, you know, Dylan's kind of looking around and he sees, like, the eyes light up. Whoosh! Then all of a sudden he starts trying to shoot. He gets his arm shot off, which is fucking crazy because it shows the arm like severed and it's like shooting. Da, 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 da. And he's screaming. And then all of a sudden he sees the predator fucking running fast. <laughs> he tries to pull out his other gun and then all of a sudden he gets taken out, you know? They hear that scream through the jungle and all of a sudden Billy, his warrior instinct kicks in, rips off his gear, pulls out his machete. And then he was like, you know what? You know, cut himself. Kind of like the warrior, like the ancient warriors. And Dutch saw that, and he was just like, oh, shit, let's just keep going. And uh, as the Predator is, like, he's looking for the Predator, just staring out. Predator came right behind and got him. It's implied that he did that, but because uh, you hear the screams. And all of a sudden, they turn around, thinking the Predator's right there. Then he's, like, fucking right on the tree. Takes out Poncho, and then, you know, he, they see the gun on the ground. Anna, the girl who is, uh, she basically works alongside with them now because, you know, he's, Dutch told her, hey, it's hunting all of us. It's even going to come after you, so you're going to have to help us if you want to get out alive. She sees the gun, picks it up. He kicks it out. No! And then he starts shooting the Predator. The Predator blows up the gun. Then he's like, run! Get to the chopper! Go! So she starts running out. He gets up, tries to run from the Predator. Predator is like inches away from him. He falls off a cliff and then lands into the water, like in the waterfall. The Predator falls right behind then he, like, rolls around in the mud, like, trying to climb up and hide between, like, the trees and shit. The Predator can't see him. And then once the Predator realizes, ah, oh, fuck, whatever, you know, takes off. Dutch realizes, hey, he is a hunter, but he can only see heat, you know, because he's covered in mud. So as that's going on, he starts gearing up to do this one big-ass final battle with it, right? And the Predator, all his victims that he killed... He basically rips out their spine with their skull, and then it shows how he's cleaning the skulls and shit, kind of like a trophy. And once Arnold Schwarzenegger sets up all of his shit, he builds his bow and arrow. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's a buff, he's a buff dude, you know? So they had to shoot where he's, like, holding down the thing, and then you see all of his muscles and shit. Um, he gets all geared up, then he finally gets, like, a like a branch, lights it on fire, and then he does the warrior scream. Oh! Predator hears it, and it's like, oh, shit. So he hides out until the predator comes. Then they have a little scruffle. He runs him through a little bit of traps. Throws like a friggin' uh, what do you call it? He throws the stick that has like the grenade powder in there. Blows it up so it hurts the predator. They have a battle back and forth. Then eventually the predator holds him up. And then he sees like that he's just human. So he's like, all right. So he wants to do a warrior battle. Takes off the gun. Unhooks his mask. And then you see the predator's face. And one of the most iconic scenes ever, you know? You see Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, staring like, you are one ugly motherfucker. <laughs> and then the Predator, like, growls. They have a scuffle and everything. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's all, like, fucked up. So he, like, tries to lure him into a trap. Come on, kill me now. I'm here. Do it. Come on. And then the freaking Predator, he fills the spikes. And he's like, oh, I ain't that stupid. So he comes around. Arnold Schwarzenegger had another trap where he had a log, like a big-ass log. 
Comes down, knocks out the Predator. He sees, he was going to take it out with a rock. And then he's like, what the hell are you? And then the Predator, you know, sets off his, you know, self-destruct bomb on his wrist. He starts laughing. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger or Dutch, he starts running. And then everything blows all up, you know, like a big old atomic bomb shit, you know. The, uh, the helicopter comes, picks up Dutch. Dutch is all fucked up, like, he's, because he's the only one that survived. So, I mean, he went through hell. And then when the movie ends, it's like the helicopter's flying away to the coast, and it's like, da 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 <laughs> So, I mean, it plays off a lot of that aspect of, the, like, the suspense, the music, the action, and the movie ends. But it's a great fucking film, because there's so many little tidbits in there. And as I said, everybody on one end of the spectrum is going to categorize this as a action film. I'm going to categorize this as a sci-fi horror film. Because you have a fucking alien who has, you know, this technology. And he's basically kind of like a warrior. So he's he doesn't go after... Like, what tripped me out is not once did the Predator try to go after the girl. You know, he knew that the girl cannot match to him versus the guys. And I thought it was interesting that he was a warrior and went after all, like, the dudes before he tried to go after the chick or he was going to spare the chick or something like that. That was a theory I read about. Um, but like I said earlier in this part, or in this part, in this sh episode, they were actually going to call this movie The Hunter. <laughs> I laugh at it because imagine calling the Predator The Hunter. It, it, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't have that same ring to it. But that's why they kept saying, like, the term, oh, he's taking us out like a hunter. It wasn't until after they edited the film, then they figured out, like, okay, Hunter's not going to go well. Um, I think they used that as, like, a code word or a code name to ship it to the movie theaters at the time. That's what I think. And then when they were editing it, they basically said, okay, well, it sounds more better with Predator, right? You know? And, like I said, another interesting tidbit was Jean-Claude Van Damme was in this film. <laughs> um, he's uncredited, but he was in this film. The scene where he drags uh, Hawkins out with his body. The fact where you see a couple of scenes where he's like invisible and shit. That was actually Jean-Claude Van Damme because he signed on to do this film. And it was going to be... They never categorized it as Arnold Schwarzenegger versus Van Damme. It was Arnold Schwarzenegger versus Alien. And the Alien was supposed to be like this warrior expert. And I think that's the reason why they went with Jean-Claude Van Damme. And, you know... Van Damme complained a lot because the suit was hot. I mean, shit, they were filming in the jungle, you know? That's why I'd be complaining, too. Like, what the fuck? I gotta, I gotta wear a mask in the jungle, you know? Yeah, I know. I get it. But uh, a lot of the things, too, why he left the film was because of the fact that he couldn't do any of his karate moves that he was famous for. So, you know, it, it left a bad taste in them. They said, fuck it. And then the creature that they had, it looked more like a bug or like a lizard. And the if you look it up on YouTube... On the Blu-ray or the DVD. They have like the behind the scenes where they show it. Oh my god, it looked fucking terrible. <laughs> um, but what was funny is that Fox, they had a budget and they were trying to stick to that budget. And they said, nope, we're going to go with this company um, because Stan Winston wants too much. And then they basically regretted it because they ended up having to spend more because they ended up going back to Stan Winston. And Stan Winston did a great fucking job on this Predator, you know, on the creature. Um, he also had help with James Cameron, who gave him the idea of, like, doing the mouth that opens up, which is kind of pretty cool, badass, you know, but Stan Winston, for those of you that don't know who Stan Winston is, I'm a golden oldie, I'm gonna, you know, I'll tell you, I'll give you a little bit of quick background, Stan Winston is a big makeup artist, and he did, um, his most w well-known, famous work was, you know, Predator, really, that kind of put him out there in the market, then he did Jurassic Park, did all the dinosaurs and shit for it. So, it was pretty cool. Like, this movie helped him gain a lot more fame and showed his chops, you know? So, it was pretty cool. Um, but the Predator, the person that actually played the creature, they wanted to get a big guy. They didn't want somebody who was like Van Damme because Van Damme's, like, obviously way shorter than, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, they got this guy. His name's Kevin... What's his name? Kevin Peter Hall. He played, um, what was it? The Sasquatch off of Harry and the Hendersons. Um, so he already had this idea, like, how to do, like, work with all that makeup and shit. But, I mean, he was a good casting call because he was a big dude. Um, they say it's just, like, all the bodysuit and everything that made him look bigger. But, I mean, if you look at pictures, he was a big dude. <laughs> you know, like, seven foot four, And, um, he did a great job playing the freaking Predator. But, you know, what also stands out to this film, to me, is the fact that... <laughs> 
There's a lot of cheesy lines. I mean, you know, in the 80s, he had a lot of cheesy lines. Arnold Schwarzenegger improved a lot of them. Um, but also, too, he had great acting. And I know I say this in every friggin' episode that, hey, this had this had great acting. This had great acting. Well, this one really did because all most of these actors, they all became a hell of a lot more successful after this film. You know, Shane Black, he was the one who played uh, Hawkins, the guy with the glasses. He ended up, you know, writing a couple Hollywood movies and got his name out. Now he's directing, like, all the Disney Marvel films. I think he did Iron Man and... Um, some of the big major ones. Um, then you had Sonny Lanham, who played uh, Billy. He went on to run for office in, uh, what was it, Knox County, I think in Tennessee. Uh, something happened, he dropped out, but he was still well known. You know, he did a lot. Jesse the Body Ventura, obviously, he's already accomplished wrestler, um, sports entertainer, all that stuff. And he became an actor, then he became a governor. I mean, he did a lot, you know. Obviously, Arnold Schwarzenegger became the biggest star out of all of it, you know, and uh, obviously it kind of built him up more, you know, Predator was just another notch on his belt, um, but I mean, it was pretty cool, you know, that, that they had great acting in it, and then, like I said, you had Jean-Claude Van Damme in it, um, even though it kind of sucks that he didn't get a credited role, he should, um, because there was a couple scenes, you don't see him, you just see his back, like, his back part dragging Hawkins. And he's in a green suit, so he looks camouflaged. But I thought that was pretty cool, you know. But um, what I thought was even funnier about this is, I don't, I think the film, I don't know if it was meant to be funny, but they did throw a lot of crude jokes in there, like guy jokes and shit, guy humor. But um, this film, you know, the writers they came out and said they got the idea, not from just like sitting around throwing ideas at a dart, you know, or throwing darts at a board and shit. Um, but they basically, the punchline in the eighties was Sylvester Stallone. He was the big dog, you know, he was a big action star and shit. And they just basically, they, they throw out this joke that, Hey, he's beaten Apollo Creed. He's beaten the Russians. He's beaten everybody except the ET. And that was the punchline. And then these writers, they basically took that concept and then they just branched it out into what the predator was, which I thought was pretty cool. You know, not too many people could say, Oh Yeah. Made a movie off a joke, <laughs> you know? But it was pretty cool how they did all that, you know? And to me, what I thought was even more interesting was the fact of how the fuck do you come up with a sound like that to make the Predator? You know, the clicking, the growling, the... You know, obviously I suck at impersonations. Come on now. <laughs> Y'all see my impersonations. But um, this actor, what was his name? Peter Cullen. He was the one who does the voice for... Uh, Optimus Prime and like the Transformer movies and shit. Um, he's actually a big, well-known voice actor. He, I don't think he ever got the credit for it. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong. Um, but I think he he came up with the idea of doing the predator clicking sound and the growl and the kind of thing. Um, and it was because of the fact of like he saw like the video feed where it shows him on masking. And for some reason, he said it looked like a hermit crab. So that's when he started doing the clicking sound. And everyone's like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? Then they kind of like the sound and they're like, oh shit. So that's how the predator sound came about. <laughs> it wasn't just like they digitally enhanced it like they do with like most creatures and shit. But I thought it was pretty cool because it's all organic. Except when he screams, I think they said they mixed in the lion, a bear, um, and another. I think a tiger or something, you know, to get that growl. But it was pretty cool. Um, I wanted to do this episode because I know within two weeks' time, they're actually going to do a sequel, a true sequel, to this first film. And I've always... I'm an act, Well, I'm a horror movie guy first, but I love my action films. I'm not going to bullshit you. <laughs> um, but I thought what was interesting is that Shane Black, the guy who played Hawkins, he's working on this movie, you know, this new sequel that's coming out soon. He wrote it, um, he has Fred Decker, he's actually, you know, he's done some horror films, Fred Decker, so he's directing it, so they're gonna go with more of the sci-fi horror action twist, kind of like this one, and you don't see too many films like that anymore, because the 80s, they had a lot of, you know, it could be an action film, it could be a total guy film or a dude film, but they had that horror element to it by tying in like this, you know, very strong warrior alien coming down and taking out each and every one of them for a trophy and shit. I thought that was a pretty cool concept, you know? <laughs> um, also, too, I want to give out a shout-out to a buddy of mine. Uh, <laughs> he was the one who, like, got me kind of back into 
liking the Predator again because I've always liked the Predator. Don't get me wrong. Um, all of my collection, you'll see back here. It all started because I got my first action figure um, when I was a kid. It was actually a Predator from Predator 2. And, it, and I, I guess it was imported or something because it's all written in like Japanese or Chinese or something. But it says Predator on it. And then it has like all the writings on it. And it was pretty cool. And that's what started me to like like collect more of my horror movie stuff. And then I kind of got out of, it, out of it because of, you know, obviously I fall, I fell into the saw hole, you know, right? <laughs> but um, my buddy of mine... It's funny because we always joke to each other. We always like quote scenes from this movie. And if you watch it right now, man, <laughs> we gotta go check out that that new one that's coming out, right? <laughs> but anyways, I thought it was funny because like we'll be talking shit to each other sometimes, and then we'll say like you know, "Good to the chopper," or we'll throw out some random lines. Oh, painless is waiting, you know. Um, and, and you know, it just it, it brought back all that fun nature with it because. Um, the Predator, I, I don't know. The, like I said, it's one of those films that bends the genres a little bit, but it's you have all of this aspect happening in one film. So you got a little bit of like dark humor with it. You got the fact that there's action. You got big muscular dudes and shit in it. Um, a lot of people, to the normal, or to the normal fan, they would see this as more of an action film. And as I said, you know, before, I'm going to see this as a sci-fi horror film because you got a fucking alien chasing after you. <laughs> You know, but it's pretty cool. Um, I've enjoyed this film. Let me know in the comments below if you guys enjoy this film because it's one of my favorite sci-fi horror films. This, They Live, and you know, a few other ones. Maybe I might do an episode down the road, but I wanted to specifically do this one because I know the new movie's coming out. I'm fucking hyped up for it. I hope you're all hyped up for it because I can't wait. You have the original actor from the first film, and he's going to write a true sequel to this. And don't get me wrong, I love the sequels. Predator 2 was great. A um, little different because he was in the city. Uh, after that, they did the, what was it, Alien vs. Predator. Because the Predator, after the first film, you know, became this huge thing. Um, they made comics of it, and then eventually they did a lot of crossovers of, like, Predator vs. Batman. Um, they even have, like, they have a fan-made trailer. Um, it's called Batman Dead End. If you ever get a chance to look it up, look it up, Batman Dead End on YouTube fucking amazing batman versus predator and then the alien comes around at the end oh so badass they did a great job on it but they did a lot of crossovers and the predator is one of those things that's just a badass character that you know they made video games they made uh comics obviously the they made another franchise with alien versus predator it's a great franchise you know i'm i'm stoked i can't wait for this this new one coming out so <laughs> yeah obviously you all could tell you know i fanboy a lot but anyways, thank you all for joining me in this episode 29 on The Predator. Hope you all see the new one that comes out. And if you do see it, let me know what you guys think about it. Let me know in the comments below. Shit, send me a message. Send me a comment. Anything. I'm a one-man guy, you know, that runs this show. I see all your comments. I see all your tweets. Everything, you know. And I respond to it. And, you know, like I said, thank you again for everybody. You know, because I wouldn't be the saw guy without all of you. But, like I said, going to beat it like a dead horse. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you all next time, okay? Bow down to